This is the Great Debate. The topic tonight is We Can't Handle the Truth. Starring for the affirmative team, Paul McDermott, Lady Julia Morris and Andy Kindler. Arguing We Can Handle the Truth. Cal Wilson, Jason Byrne and Mark Thomas, plus a special mystery guest. Now, let battle commence. Here is your master of ceremonies, Corinne Grant. Gentlemen, boys and girls, falsifiers, fabricators, fibbers and fact checkers, welcome to the 2012 Melbourne International Comedy Festival Great Debate! Tonight's topic, of course, comes from the 1992 movie A Few Good Men. 1992 was the olden days, young people out the front. <laughs> A Few Good Men, in which Jack Nicholson famously roared, You can't handle the truth! 20 years later, you can't handle the truth is what most Australian politicians think about the electorate. <laughs> when the policeman asks, do you know how fast you were going? Do you say, honestly, officer, I have no idea? Or, mate, I was flying, I was so pissed. <laughs> do you want to know that you are an insignificant speck on an unimportant planet hurtling through a cold, empty universe without meaning, purpose or consequence? Or do you prefer to be told, you're special? <laughs> is the truth a lie with its legs crossed? Is a lie the truth with its legs open? <laughs> if someone says, I have never loved anyone the way I love you, is it a lie when they add, because this way is illegal? <laughs> now, stop wriggling and grab hold of the monkey bars. <laughs> The English philosopher Francis Bacon once said, no pleasure compares to standing upon the vantage ground of truth. Then again, he was never in a jacuzzi with three midgets, a pony and the captain of the affirmative, Paul McDermott! Thanks, Chris, I love you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. The truth will set you free, but as we will prove to you, you can't handle the truth, and we can't handle the truth. That's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> Except for truth is beauty, and beauty is truth. And that is all ye know on earth, and all ye need know. No. You also have to know that it's not intelligent, healthy, or funny to shit in a spa. <laughs> In hindsight, in hindsight, do you think to yourself, oh, if only the jets weren't on. <laughs> it was like we were sitting in a giant chocolate mochaccino. <laughs> yeah, cover their ears, hide from this. They can't handle the truth, we've gone a bit quiet now, we're uncertain. It happened, ladies and gentlemen, 1975. Shit in a spa. <laughs> Jason Byrne was there. <laughs> we can't handle the truth, we need lies. Without lies, the fabric of our society would be rent asunder. Imagine if people spoke the truth even occasionally. You look good, really? No. <laughs> we don't like it, we can't handle it. It's not you, it's me. We've all heard that. It's bullshit. <laughs> it is you, it's always been you. You're always the problem. I'm okay. You're completely fucked. <laughs> there will be no carbon tax. <laughs> Under the government I lead. Politicians lie to us, we lie to each other, and the people we lie to the most are the ones we love. That was the best sex I ever had. <laughs> really? No. It was like trying to wank without a thumb. <laughs> I 
Oh, by the way, if anyone asks you in that post-coital moment, what are you thinking? I learned uh, the other day that the wrong answer is Zac Efron. <laughs> we don't want honesty in those most intimate moments in our life, and why? Because we can't handle the truth. In a recent missive, <laughs> Pope Benedict, or as I prefer to call him, Cardinal Ratzinger! Ratzinger! <laughs> uh, Ratzinger. <laughs> spoke about the importance of truth in the digital age. And I thought to myself, what the fuck would the Catholic Church know about the truth? <laughs> <laughs> they are responsible, as with all religions, for the greatest lie. God. <laughs> I'm going to let you in on a secret. You won't be able to handle it. There is no God. <laughs> Christians, Catholics, your religious folk, they can't handle the truth that there is no God. They can barely handle the idea of dinosaurs and dinosaurs left footprints. <laughs> Where's God's footprint? Where is it? A sandal halfway up in a cliff somewhere. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Red Singer! <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, so, so James Cameron could go by in his bathosphere and see it down the bottom of a trench. A, a toga at the bottom of a trench. At first we thought it was a Phoenician sailcloth until we tore the name tag. Yahweh. <laughs> the Ten Commandments. What happened to them? God's Word written on stone, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Moses come down from the mountain, he, just, he, he smashed them, smashed them up. There's nothing left of them, nothing left of them. He said, look what you've made me do. <laughs> the good book, the Bible, the good book. Why do we call it the good book? Because we can't call it my first big book of lies. <laughs> it would be giving too much away. <laughs> what is the good book good for? Holding open doors. <laughs> Pressing wildflowers. <laughs> decoupage and killing cane toads, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I think we can all agree that the Bible is a load of old cock. Still, it's the best-selling book on the planet, and why? Because we can't handle the truth. I had to do a, a radio interview to promote this program. And uh, I went on, the interview said, uh, Oh, great, uh, that's great, Paul, you're doing the topic, uh, we can't handle the truth. Uh, Paul, what's your, uh, your favourite part of a woman? I went, what? He said, what's your favourite part of a woman? I said, I won't be part of this fellow-centric idea that I should name. No, Paul, he said, are you, a, are you a leg man, a breast man? Do you like their thighs, their bums? What's your favourite part of a woman, Paul? And I said, well, if I'm, if I'm being totally honest, I suppose the vagina. <laughs> I said, you can have a great set of legs, but if they don't end in a vagina. <laughs> you're in very confusing territory. <laughs> and as a man, you don't know what you're getting yourself into, letting yourself in for. I said, I've been out with plenty of women who don't have vaginas. <laughs> and they're... <laughs> And there's always an awkward moment when you think, mm, I was expecting something a little less. <laughs> and I said, this is a disgusting attitude that in this day and age, we should still think of women as cups of meat, as, as leg, breast, thigh. We're not all Kyle Sanderlands. <laughs> we can't do that anymore. You've got to see a woman as a whole. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. You can't handle it. You're a hole. You're a hole. You're a hole. You're a hole. You are. You're all whole people, women. <laughs> that interview never went to air. <laughs> and that's the last time I do anything for Hillsong. <laughs> and I was disgusted that in 2012, we still can't handle vagina. We can't handle vagina on the radio. We can't handle vagina on TV. When will we as a society be able to handle vagina? <laughs> While we're on the topic, the computer. 
the most extraordinary piece of technology that we have in all our lives now connect us with centuries of thought. What do we use it for? We wank over it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 70% of all internet traffic is to porn sites. A uh, quick show of hands, how many men here in the room visit porn sites? <laughs> maybe, maybe I should have asked for both hands, hey? <laughs> yeah, you're all fucking liars and you know it. <laughs> what about the cosmetic industry? One of the biggest industries in Australia, if not the world. Every time you walk into a department store, you have to walk through a palace of stink, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Estee Lauder, the cosmetic queen from Queens, was behind some of the most revolutionary breakthroughs in regards to anti-aging creams. She died in 2004 at the age of 98. But she looked 96. <laughs> Keep using those creams, they're clearly working. We can't handle the truth. We get old, we die. That's it. When did we uh, start not being able to handle the truth? At birth, when we were pushed out that whatever, you know, what? <laughs> That's when we were first lied to. Oh, he's beautiful. <laughs> no, he's a living, breathing tetrapod prune with eyes. <laughs> you could put a ginseng root in a nappy, it would look better than that. <laughs> oh! Oh, he's walking, he's talking. He's so talented. He's so talented because he can piss into his own mouth. <laughs> and at the age of seven, I don't think you should be able to do that. <laughs> when our children become rational, that's when we lie to them even more. No, mummy and daddy were just doing push-ups. <laughs> Eat your vegetables. You'll grow up big and strong. Have you ever seen a vegetarian? <laughs> Oh no, honey, no, darling, no. The van plays the music when it's run out of ice cream. <laughs> Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny, God and the Labour Party, all fantasies for children. <laughs> we lie to children to cajole them, to protect them, to control them. That's why everyone lies to us, and we love it. Who was the most honest person in the last hundred years? No, fuck it, last thousand years. Who? Jesus. Charlie Sheen. <laughs> we couldn't handle it. We had a fucking global meltdown about that. One honest man. I'm going to leave you now. Oh, thank God. But I'd like to leave you with this. <laughs> I'd like to leave you with this thought and see you out there smuggling, believing that you actually uh, can handle the truth. But let's not forget, in your search for the truth today, you came to a comedy debate. <laughs> Next up, arguing we can handle the truth. Team captain Cal Wilson plus Julia Morris and Jason Byrne. According to the British philosopher Alfred North Whitehead, apart from the blunt truth, our lives sink decadently amid the perfume of hints and suggestions. And nobody sinks suggestively into perfume decadence better than the captain of the negative, Cal Wilson! Now, ladies and gentlemen, we the negative can handle the truth. However inconvenient or unpleasant it might be, we can accept that the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy aren't real, that they're just constructs invented by Santa because he was getting bored with all the time off. <laughs> I'll be honest, there are things that I can't handle, but the truth is not one of them. I can't handle teenage shop assistants calling me babe. <laughs> I can't handle those smug My Family stickers on the back of people's cars. for a better way to make me ram the back of your car, you found it. But most of all, I can't handle the lies 
that the affirmative team are living, especially the lies that you tell, Paul McDermott. You come up here with your dark, derisive leer. You come up here with your, your sort of, your look like, like the devil got a clothing deal with Roger David. <laughs> you come up here stalking around the stage, spouting vitriol in your dress up clothes like an angry bantam in evening wear. <laughs> an act though, Paul McDermott. I know you're not the sardonic, brooding gargoyle slash leprechaun that you claim to be. <laughs> I've seen you draw kittens. I've seen you skip through leaves. I've seen you wearing lemon-coloured Hello Kitty track pants and loving it. <laughs> I know that under your somewhat budget finery, the heart that beats... <laughs> It's not full and fierce and full of fury, but rather filled with fluff and flag and flowers. That's right, under that suit, there's a massive zip. And he's just a big, old, soft, novelty pyjama case. <laughs> so let's see. Let's see if you can handle some other truths. I'll start you off with some easy ones. Shorts should never be shorter than their own pockets. <laughs> Everybody comprehensively handled. <laughs> Leggings are not pants. <laughs> there is never an excuse for jeggings! <laughs> the word jeggings should never be uttered unless, and only unless, it's actually the name of your butler. <laughs> and you're saying jeggings. Bring the car around the front. I want to run over that woman that's flashing her pockets. <laughs> now, I don't love lies because I grew up with one of the world's greatest liars, my older brother. He told me things like Egyptian mummies roamed our hallway at night. He told me that Daleks could see me through the television. <laughs> I was a nervous child. <laughs> when we had people to stay and I would have to stay in the spare bed in his room and he would pretend to die. <laughs> I would be lying there in the dark and I would hear, Cal, hey Cal, I don't feel very well. And I'd go, are you okay, Sean? And he'd go, no, I think I might die. <laughs> and I would go, don't die, don't die. And he would go, I don't want to... Uh, and I would go, Sean, Sean. <laughs> and my mum would come running down the hallway to find out what was wrong and I would go, Sean's dead. And of course he wasn't dead, he was just peacefully asleep, looking adorable. And she would leave the room thinking, that little one's a bit fucking cracked. <laughs> and then in the darkness I would hear this, I didn't die that time. <laughs> The thing is, children can handle the truth. They want it. That's why they believe sadistic older brothers. Living with a small child, you know that they tell the truth all the time. It's like living with a tiny police informant. They tell you everything. They tell everyone everything. That man's fat. I done a wee in the sand pit. Sometimes mummy cries. They say everything. They tell the truth, and what do we tell them in return? We tell them lies. Us sophisticated city dwellers are the worst. When a child's pet dies, we tell them, Smokey's gone to the farm. <laughs> Smokey's gone to the farm, that's right. Don't, don't teach them how to grieve. Don't equip them to, to deal with what will be inevitably the first of many deaths in their lives. When country children's animals die, they don't get lied to, do they? Do they get told, I'm sorry, Jess has gone to the city to work in a cafe? <laughs> He's going to grow a moustache and ride a fixie round Fitzroy. <laughs> no, they get told when an animal has died, they get told that it's died, and if it's naturally delicious, they eat it. <laughs> when our old cat died of cancer, having never smoked a day in his life, we told our two-year-old son the truth, and he handled it. I let him see me cry. And as I held him and a tear fell on his arm, he said, look, a piece of mummy's sad came off. <laughs> And it made me smile and think, I can use that for material. <laughs> the other night, a woman in my show told me at the age of four, she asked, where did I come from? And this is what her mother said. 
I bought a skeleton from God and put you together with special glue. <laughs> I said, who is your mum? Stephen King? <laughs> I love the truth, I want the truth. I don't mind embellishment. I think embellishment is like the, the parsley of the truth. It's just a little garnish. Now, of course, there are differences between embellishment and downright lies. Let's examine the recent case of the clergyman in England who presented himself at hospital with, how do I say this delicately, a potato that had gone back underground. <laughs> Now, I know that you're supposed to keep spuds in a dark place, but that does seem to be taking a bit far. He explained that he'd been hanging curtains in the nude when he fell back onto the potato that was sitting on the table and it was somehow propelled inside his nether regions. <laughs> How implausible. No one keeps potatoes on a table. <laughs> nice try, Vicar, but people are going to have questions. By making some ridiculous story up, it's just drawing more focus to it. Tell the truth, we can handle it. Just say, I was lonely, and I took the phrase root vegetable <laughs> as an instruction. <laughs> or at the very least, come up with a better lie. The potato got me drunk and tried to use me as a balaclava. <laughs> ever going to be taken seriously by his congregation. Certainly no one is going to want to join him for a Sunday roast. <laughs> Give us the truth. We'll cope with it. How refreshing it would be if there was, whenever there's a scandal in the media, if the person at the centre of the storm didn't try to make up some weak-ass excuse about their behaviour and instead was just honest. Francesco, you sank the Costa Concordia. Why did you say you'd fallen in a lifeboat? Because I'm a coward and I'm a dick. <laughs> ben, Mr. Polis, late of Energy Watch, why did you go feral on Facebook? Because I'm a dick. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> because I'm a dick. <laughs> because I'm so much of a dick that footballers want to get me out and take photos of me. Now the truth is, thank you for finally getting that. <laughs> the truth is, we know what's going to happen here today in this debate, so let's talk about it honestly. My team are going to blow you away. Jason Byrne is going to probably attempt to break someone in the audience, if we're lucky, actually kill them. <laughs> Sorry, send them to the farm. <laughs> and then Mark Thomas will eviscerate the argument with his savage brain claw, stunning us all with the frenzy of his intelligence, and we, having won your hearts and minds, we will be an indrawn breath away from winning the debate when Paul McDermott will unexpectedly sing. <laughs> And suddenly the affirmative will win. Your brain's unable to make themselves heard over the roaring of your hormones. But that's okay. That's the truth. And we can handle it. And if they win, we're right. We can handle the truth. And if we win, we win. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. After the break, arguing we can't handle the truth. Lady Julia Morris plus Jason Byrne. In the words of the American writer Robert Brolt, someday a computer will give a wrong answer and spare someone's feelings. A man will have invented artificial intelligence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the second speaker for the affirmative, last stupenda, Julia Morris! Oh, darling, thank you. Thank you. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, baby. <laughs> oh, kids. I'm not the slightest bit interested in the truth, and nor is anybody else. My gorgeous and insanely stylish colleague has really just taken us through a list of points that are quite interesting, forward slash fabulous and funny, but not necessarily factual, forward slash truth. What I'm saying is that society has proven time and time again that we can't handle the truth, kids. And it's not just hearing the truth, it's saying the truth. There's only three situations in my life where I tell the truth. One is when I'm under oath. One is when I'm drunk, and the other is when I have PMT. <laughs> and fucking God help you if I'm under all three, because <laughs> it's simply not ideal. Yes, Your Honour. You know, the thing is... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Honour. That's a nice wig. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just saying... 
No one's ready for the truth. Do you know what? Everyone also personally has their own distorted view of the truth. I, my brain cannot handle the truth on any level. I, I've spoken to you about it in the past, about my reverse body dysmorphia. And there's something that my brain has had to take on in order for me to get outside the door each day, is when I look at myself in the mirror and I think, oh my God, J-Mo, you are so hot. Like hot, <laughs> like white heat. I just look at myself and I think, someone needs to slide it into you today, you're so good. That's what I think, right? Oh, can you not handle that little length of truth? Well, that's how I feel, right? That is my truth. And then I'll look at myself in a photograph a few days later and I'll think, oh, look at Barry O'Farrell in my dress. <laughs> oh, no. I don't recognise myself. I've had to say to my husband, Dan, baby, you've got to tell me the truth. You can't let me go out dressed like that because I can't see it. I cannot see it when I look in the mirror. All I see is a general certain white heat, right? So he's now taken it upon himself and he's taken his life into his own hands. <laughs> He has to tell me the truth. Last year I bought the most beautiful dress, a little shoestring straps, tiny little thing, and I came out and Dan said to me, oh, I said, how do I look? He said, baby, do you think your arms are ready for that dress? <laughs> Apparently they weren't. Um, <laughs> Look, I just thought I was back in Singapore. When I was in Singapore, I used to go places and they'd say, hey, flabby, flabby white lady, you look like flabby white lady. It was the same sort of thing. I wasn't expecting to get it from my own husband. And you know, uh, the other thing is, uh, look, he said to someone recently, um, you know, Julie's a very clever girl. She's not exactly book smart. <laughs> Can you believe it? I see, here's a couple of fucking bookends. <laughs> Why don't you ram your smart books between that? How about that? People can't handle the truth. I am very much of their number. Do you know what? I can't handle the truth so much in my own life that I actually, I've turned 42 and um, that's, okay, I'm 44 this year, but <laughs> I need glasses. I can't read. And I want you just to have a look at how big this font is on my... <laughs> because I can't wear glasses on the stage. None of it's good. What about sexual relations? <laughs> I'm for it. That's what I'm saying. I had to say to a young boy years ago, and young people are so sweet. They're so sweet, but they can't roll around. They're not good at sexual relations. And I said to him, um, and you can't tell him, I wanted to say to this young one, would you get off and finish yourself off? Because I'm a bit bored. But you can't... You can't say that because people can't handle the truth. <laughs> Look, speaking of uh, sexual relations, we would not procreate uh, if we told people the truth about what children are like. Look, I say to other, particularly pregnant women, he'd never say, are there any pregnant women in the house? Just please could you close your ears? Because having children is fucked. <laughs> I know it's too late for you now, but I'm just saying, if you knew half the truth, you wouldn't do it. It's 99% shit ass. 1% okay. And then all I keep reading in magazines are people saying, oh, and look, it's been the most important job in my life and it's really been so special. No, it's fucked. <laughs> They're up early morning, there's nothing nice about them. And then you get in big trouble with them all the time. I'm in a lift a week and a half ago with my three-year-old and there's just a couple of people in the lift and she said, Mum, that woman has such a big bum bum. <laughs> None of us could handle that truth. <laughs> Cracked nipples, stitches underneath. No one wants to hear the truth is what I'm saying. We teach our kids to lie. That's what we do all the time. It's all about it. We have truly uh, moved through the honeymoon cock phase of our lives and we have gone on to a point, and I'm not even going to tell you what honeymoon cock means because you can't handle the truth is what I'm saying. <laughs> I really feel it, we magnify the good bits of our lives and we minimise the yucky bits. It's the only way that we can get up and get through with. So it's the only way we're able to cope because why? We can't handle the truth. It's a factual situation. We can give you examples of little truths and not truths, but we can't fucking handle it. Arrest my cuts. <laughs> I was so obsessed with the phrase honeymoon cock that I couldn't think of anything else. Is everybody with an iPhone in the audience now is wikipedia Honeymoon cock. What is honeymoon cock? The truth is that it was a bet yesterday. Someone said, can you get the expression honeymoon cock into the debate? I said, you fucking watch me. Coming up, crazy Irishman, Jason Burns. 
To quote the English satirist Samuel Butler, any fool can tell the truth, but it requires a man of some sense to know how to lie well. Of course, first we've got to find a man with some sense. <laughs> While we look for one, here's Jason Byrne. Uh, first asked to the, uh, this debate, I said, what's the topic? They said, it's that we can't handle the truth. I said, great, which side am I on? You're on the negative side, they said. I said, great, so the we can't handle the truth side. No, they said, that's the affirmative side. <laughs> I said, but surely you can't handle the truth, there's a negative thing. They said, it is, but that's the argument, and uh, is to be the negative of we can't handle the truth. But <laughs> surely we can handle the truth is the positive of that. It is, they said, but the other team are not called the positive, they're called the affirmative. <laughs> right, I said, so to sum up, I'm on the negative side, fighting for a positive thing that's called the negative side, while on the other side, they're on the affirmative side, fighting for a negative thing, hoping to overcome our negative side about a positive thing to prove their negative thing, which is the affirmative side, which is the positive thing. <laughs> exactly, they said. Right, so... We survive as humans, striving every day to find the truth. How much power do we need to get a man on the moon? What's the cure for cancer? How do we keep Paul McDermott off our TV screens? <laughs> Does my bum look big in this? The truth, yes, it's blocking out the sun. <laughs> so I, tonight, I'm willing to bet my belief in the we can handle the truth theory by inviting up a couple to this stage. <laughs> I gotta just pick out a nice couple. I'm not very young because I won't have much knowledge. So, uh, and he kind of, no, well, not this man, he's just looking on the ground. So that's a good. <laughs> too young, too floppy haired, good. <laughs> Sunnies on your head, don't fucking understand that. Uh, <laughs> hang on, maybe up here. There might be, oh shit, no, not you. <laughs> oh, man in the glasses with the check. It's, oh, oh, hang on, is, is, that, is that a partner of yours? It is. Will you, will, you come, will you come and help me? It's very similar. It's just a Q and A. It's just a Q and A. They're coming. They're coming. Come on, get a round of applause. Follow me. Keep the clapping. Keep the clapping. <laughs> this way. This way. No. 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 Don't worry. All will be fine. Just ignore the stuff in the background, right? <laughs> So, oh, sorry, what's your name, first of all? Robin. Robin. Hello, Robin. Aww. And Aaron. A Aaron. Hello, Aaron. <laughs> all we're going to do is basically just prove that you, as a woman, can handle the truth by you, Aaron, was it, Jess? Yes. Answering yes. just some simple questions, all right? I just need you to pop into this harness here. Wouldn't it be grand, right? <laughs> first of all, hang on, Aaron, wait. You, you don't have to get hurt at all. It's oh. all going to be on him, right? So, <laughs> So don't be frightened, just uh, put, do something. I don't know what happens here. Just put the, that goes in there. There's a harness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, yeah don't mind him. Just the, just... Oh, that's your he, team. He's the, yeah, that's our team. He's the devil. Okay. <laughs> okay, he's in. Let's make sure this bit here is totally in. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a simple, oh. simple experiment. And it'll prove, it'll prove that, you know, we, we can handle the truth and this whole room are going to leave here just thinking that this team has to win because the effort put into this fucking bit, right? <laughs> is this, is your, are you sure this is your... I mean, long, how many years are you married to this man? Um... Seven. 1977. 1977. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't give a shit what happens to you. <laughs> yeah, can we just, uh, maybe oh, just get uh, 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 Don't worry. So, as I say, this, this, this will, this, this <laughs> Bring in the, the truth board. This is the truth board. I think most of the room can kind of guess what's going to happen now. Are you okay, Aaron? No. <laughs> okay, we're going to pop them in. That's good. Okay, we can probably, we can probably just lower them down. Yeah, bring them down gently. Find them. Maybe you shouldn't. Have, you shouldn't have looked at that bit. 
Okay, Robin, we just need you to stand here, right? And hang on. So, what, watch. No, you don't have to jump. <laughs> Jump on the thing! <laughs> I've got I've got this special item. Okay, so <laughs> no, don't get this this will be yours, right? Okay. Oh. So oh shit! <laughs> oh, you're so dainty. <laughs> that was so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> Just, okay, so, see if we can lift it, yeah. I don't know. It's, 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 I just need you to hit that oh. after. Not yet, not yet. Yeah. Aaron, are you okay up there? No. Just, just, oh no. my God. Yeah. I love this country. Insurance is just not a factor. Right. Yeah, just pat him up, hit him in the balls, and he's fucking great. So, so I'm going to ask Aaron to prove that you, as a lady, can handle the truth. I'm going to ask Aaron some questions. <laughs> And Aaron, you'll answer them yeah. truthfully. You have to answer them truthfully for them to work. Yeah. And depending on how much you can handle the truth is how hard you hit that, right? <laughs> if he upsets you and you can't handle the truth, hit that really hard. If it's okay, just give it a bit of a tap and he won't get it in the balls, right? <laughs> Robin, are you ready? Are you ready for the first question? Aaron, are you okay? No. <laughs> When Robin asks, do I look like Jennifer Hawkins? You say, of course. <laughs> Just hit that on your feeling of that. <laughs> that didn't fucking work, right, sir? <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be that hard. Okay, next one. Would you, Aaron, have no problem checking for a pile in your partner's bum? <laughs> no, 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 you wouldn't. Can you handle that? Let's see. Is this, is this is going to be it. Let's see. Oh, that's okay. Yes, you can handle that. Oh, yeah, that's one and one, one and one. Okay, next one. Is, is Robin a terrible cook? No. <laughs> That's up to you, yeah. it's up to you. It's up to you yeah. how much you can handle that truth there. <laughs> Could you handle it? <laughs> Let's see if he's all right. Hang on a sec, we'll just check. <laughs> is, is that okay? Are you feeling better? Uh, I'm better. He's okay, Robin, he's okay. Okay, it's 2-1 against us. It's 2-1 against us. Oh. Right, next question, Aaron. Looking at old photos of Robin, are you thinking, oh, you used to be really hot? No. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, can you have lipstick? Can you have lipstick? Oh, that is 2-2. Two, two. We are even. Right. Uh, do you love the dog more than your wife? No. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah. Have a look. <laughs> Have a look, no. have a think, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> We're winning. That's uh, speed two. Right, okay. When your wife or says, Robin says, when making love to me, am I the only person you think of? Is that yes or no? N yes. No. <laughs> yes. I, I, how are people listening? <laughs> take it, Robin, take it. Jesus! I feel like Mary Magdalene! I'm sorry, Aaron! Last question, it's now. Basically, it is. They're one up. If we get this, then this means that she can handle the truth, right? Okay, when Robin is breathing on your face at night in bed, Aaron, do you look at her and think, I'm the luckiest man alive? Or yes. do you think, wait! No! <laughs> Or do you think I could just pinch her nose and maybe she'll stop breathing on me like a, like a panting luckiest man. wolf? Watch which one? The wolf or, or the luckiest man? Luckiest man. Are you telling the truth, yes. Aaron? Don't fucking lie up there! Tell the truth! Uh, yes! Yes! You will. Luckiest man! Luckiest, luckiest man. man! It's up to Honest. you! Just finish it off whatever way you want to!
next up from the US of A, Andy Kindler plus Mark Thomas. Winston Churchill said a lie can get around the world before the truth has a chance to get its pants on. Which makes me wonder what has the truth been doing and why can't it find its pants? <laughs> With answers to all this and more, the final speaker for the affirmative, Andy Kendler! Wow. Good luck to me, right? Thank you so much. Well, that's not going to be uh, hard to follow. Thanks. <laughs> like following a beheading. That's fantastic. <laughs> Interesting that he tried to prove that people can handle the truth with a circus act. <laughs> Magic tricks, lights. Before I begin, I just want to say it is an honor to work with these fantastic comedians. Are these fantastic comedians? And I also want to say, you are wonderful. Are you not a wonderful crowd, folks? Is this a great crowd? All right, everything I just said was a lie. Everything. I don't know if these are wonderful comedians. I don't know that this is a great crowd. There could be ax murderers here. I don't know anything about you. I've got a lot, I've prepared a lot for this. I have a lot of arguments here. That's a lie, I've got nothing written on this paper. I'm giving you the illusion. Now I'm walking dramatically to one side of the stage. Right, babe? Baby, baby, babe, 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 babe. I'm gonna tell you a quote. If you tell a big enough lie and tell it frequently enough, it will be believed. Adolf Hitler said that. <laughs> See? Even Hitler agrees with me. <laughs> that might not be my strongest argument. <laughs> and, don't, and please don't take it out of the context, all right? <laughs> I don't want to read in the press, just Hitler, Hitler says Hitler agrees with me. I don't want that. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I've never gotten press. <laughs> you know, I had to follow, was I like following off the circus thing and things are, I can't. All right. <laughs> that was five minutes? Yeah, it's actually five minutes and 50 oh seconds. <laughs> Boy, Einstein was right. E equals comic struggling squared. <laughs> A team of scientists at the University of Newcastle, which I guess is a place. I'm not good with facts or persuasiveness. They can do a blood test that will show you whether you're gonna get Alzheimer's. I don't wanna know that I'm gonna get Alzheimer's. How's that gonna help me? When I was born, if there was a test that said, oh, by the way, we know for a fact you're gonna be sexually awkward from age 18 to 30, keep it to yourself. <laughs> Keep me in the dark. I don't want to have facts. I want to lie to myself. I want to lie to you. I just want to live in a world of lies. I, have not, I, I will never go on a cruise, for example, because of the movie Titanic. And not just because it was a terrible movie. I, I don't want to go on a cruise because I'm scared that it's going to sink. Because we keep, it's the hundred year anniversary of the Titanic and there keeps, there's celeb it's a celebration. I don't want to celebrate a, a big ship sinking. If I want to revisit a tragedy, I'll watch Jay Leno, okay? Do <laughs> people get Jay Leno here? Yeah, we don't get him in America either. Yeah. It's quite possible. Thank you. It's quite possible I'm trying to shoehorn material for my act into this argument. It's quite possible. Don't worry, folks. Don't worry. Don't, don't let the fact that I look like I don't know what I'm doing and I uh, bail on every argument, don't let that dissuade you from the overall tr truth of the lie. All right. <laughs> In conclusion, as if I started. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm winning this. I am winning this country over. <laughs> what am I? What am I? Uh, my Jewish John Wayne? Look. I'll call Hitler again. Look, this is me. Uh, don't be honest. The truth hurts. I can be honest. I could say things right now about everybody here. 
But it would be mean, it would be cruel. Cal, I don't, I like that hair. Is that, is that how you hang yourself up at night? <laughs> but that was cruel. I don't like myself for saying these horrible things. <laughs> nice dress, something, something, drapes. <laughs> Lies, lies, lies. Keep lying. Truth bad. My set was fairly strong. <laughs> Not gonna go after this guy because he'll get it back. Please rebook me next year. Thank you very much. Andy Kingler! After the break, arguing we can handle the truth. English comic Mark Thomas plus a special mystery guest. According to the English writer Piers Paul Reed, truth is always duller than fiction. Piers obviously hasn't read any of the Twilight books. <laughs> Please welcome the final speaker for the negative, the glittering Mark Thomas. Thank you. Thank you very much. When I was a child, my mother said to me, every time you tell a lie, a fairy dies. <laughs> a fairy dies. And at the age of six, I said, bring me the bodies. <laughs> Before I convince you of our rightness, I have to point out two things. I am going to tell you one lie tonight, and it is to make you feel better. But I will do a sign so you know I am lying. Okay, and that sign will be, okay, that is the universal sign for fantasy. So when you see me do this, I'm lying. The second thing is I am trying desperately not to be too obscene, so I have eradicated the C word from what I'm going to say to you tonight. I will not say the C word, instead of which I will replace the C word with another word. And the word I will use tonight as a replacement C word is trifle. <laughs> now. I want to start by explaining one thing. There is no such thing as ultimate truth. The scientific philosopher Karl Popper said that we should disprove a fact in order to gain greater knowledge. And I'll give you an example of this. When I was a teenager, I used to think as soon as I get a girlfriend, I'll stop masturbating. <laughs> and now I think as soon as she's gone to sleep, I'll start. <laughs> So we disprove one thing and gain a greater knowledge. I know you're sitting there going, that was a cock joke wrapped up in scientific theory. You're right. <laughs> I liked it. It is not us that can't handle truth. No. It is politicians and those in power that cannot handle us having the truth. A couple of years ago, there was a scandal in Britain where politicians were found to be taking expenses and using public money corruptly. Politicians were arrested and some of them ended up in jail. Millions of pounds was paid back to the public purse and democracy was the loser initially because people lost faith in politicians. This photograph is of a cafe opposite the House of Parliament. And you can just see the reflection, there is a bit of the House of Parliament in the windows. Can we have a look at the bigger sign, please? Can we show the sign? Only two MPs allowed in at any time. <laughs> so great was the scandal. People thought, why should we pay public money for MPs to pay for their private homes? Should we not be able to enjoy these homes ourselves? And so a group was formed. 
This is the MP's house open day society. <laughs> this MP had his moat cleaned on expenses. <laughs> this is a picture of his home to which someone broke in, stripped off, dived in <laughs> and swam in the moat, reclaiming it for public good and stank for three days. <laughs> this MP was very, very corrupt. You can see our home and there's a little, just under the number, there's a potted bay tree. A potted bay tree that was paid for on taxpayers' money. A stranger approaches, lifts the tree and takes it. <laughs> Nothing was heard of that tree. It disappeared as if off the face of the planet itself. Then a video appeared on YouTube. <laughs> the MP was issued with an ultimatum. She should resign or her bay tree would face the consequences. <laughs> One evening in Trafalgar Square, as the deadline drew near, a woman appeared on the fourth empty plinth with a banner and the bay tree. Very fashionable anarchists assembled in the square. <laughs> The police officer actually said to me, I'm the one on the end. <laughs> the police officer said to me, why have you got your face covered? You could be a terrorist. I said, yeah, if Al-Qaeda has a gay smurf division. <laughs> As the police looked on helpless, bolt croppers were produced and the tree executed. <laughs> the tree is dead. But there was a diagonal cut on the tree. And any gardener will tell you that a diagonal cut is not death, but is in fact pruning. And that tree is still alive. A symbol of our quest for truth and a quest for hope. That tree alive. <laughs> now there has been some form of rather louche moral equivalence made tonight. I'm looking at no one in particular, Paul. <laughs> Some people would say because we have to make small lies that ease our social transactions with each other, to make our lives more pleasant, say you look lovely in that dress, no everything's fine, your haircut's beautiful, because we can't make these truths, we therefore cannot take the bigger truths. But if someone compares a bad haircut and your comments about it with say, for example, an illegal war in Iraq, led on part by a bastardised idiot of a president, supported by a lying British Prime Minister, that has resulted in hundreds of soldiers' deaths and hundreds of thousands of civilian deaths. If you were to compare a bad haircut and telling fibs about it, and say the Iraq war, and say therefore we cannot tell the truth about it, why you would be an utter trifle. You have to vote for truth because it's a vote for progress. You have to vote for truth because it's a trust in us. Because if you say we can't handle truth, then we have to leave it to politicians and journalists. And we actually aren't that stupid. We can take control of our own lives, thank you very much. And if you don't vote for truth, if you vote for lies, a fairy dies. <laughs>
uh, issue with Julia's assertion that when we ask, does my bum look big in this, that we want the truth. We know the truth. We know exactly how big our own asses are. We just love the smell of fear. <laughs> also said uh, that having children and childbirth was absolutely terrible and I would like to take issue with that as well. Women like to scare other women so when you're pregnant they like to say things to you like oh labour, labour, labour's really bad, oh that's going to be terrible, I was in labour for two days and then another woman will join in and she go oh that's nothing, I was in labour for two weeks and then someone else that you've never met before will go oh that's nothing, I was in labour for longer than Mark Latham was in labour. <laughs> And they like to frighten you, but here is the truth about childbirth. It's a hard day's work, and at the end of it, you win a person! <laughs> the great Australian phrase is true blue. It's true blue, there's that weird song that I don't quite understand, but you all seem to love, true blue. It's true blue, it's not inaccurate aqua. <laughs> It's not dubious authenticity orange, is it? It's true blue, and that's what you are. Ladies and gentlemen, the affirmative believe that you can't handle the truth. That means that they believe that you are weaklings, cowering wimplets, too frightened to face reality. They despise you. They spit upon you. They doubt your strength, while we, we the negative, honour your bravery, your fierce hearts and your intelligence. We know that you can and indeed must handle the truth. And now I would like to speak directly, I would like to speak directly to those of you amongst the audience who have ovaries or indeed possess wieners that enjoy the company of other wieners. And I would like to say before that McDermott takes the stage and plunders it with his sneer and his snake hips and the siren song that we all know must inevitably follow. Before that happens, Plug your ears with tissues or crumpled paper or the toe of your sock. Don't listen to that slanderous sauce pot and his lascivious lyrics. Let your brain quell your hormones and award us the winners of the debate. Handle the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Or as Mark Thomas says, be responsible for the death of the truth fairy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. Brilliant. I thought it was over. <laughs> Let's start with Cal Wilson. Cal Wilson started off attacking the big figures in society. Teenage shop assistants. 14-year-old <laughs> girls who make fashion mistakes. And then she attacked me, ladies and gentlemen, for quite some time. Flabby old, fat old me inside my... My, my debonair, satanistic suit. <laughs> it's true, I can't handle the truth. They dye my hair. For this show, I am not allowed to look as I normally look. I have a long grey beard, I have grey hair. <laughs> I am completely covered in grey hair. If I took off this attire, I have a fucking carpet on my back. It looks like you could buy it from Ikea. It's fucking shocking. When I sunbake naked, magpies come from miles to steal the wonderful silver from my groin. <laughs> my pubic hair makes domiciles for native birds. <laughs> and it's true, I can't handle the truth. That's why I dye my hair. Oh, baby. That's why I lie face down in moisturiser. <laughs> Uh, Cal also said uh, that children are so honest. Children always tell the truth. This, of course, did follow after 20 minutes of telling us that her brother lied to her consistently through her youth. <laughs> this leaves you with two conclusions. One, that she was lying to us. <laughs> or two, that her brother was a much, much older man. <laughs> <laughs> pretending to be a family member. <laughs> then I missed a bit 
because I was writing that shit down <laughs> rather than having it pre-prepared on my iPad. And I heard oh. Oh, music it's, from it's, heaven. It's the truth fairies. Oh, it's, it's, Truth fairies, I really wasn't expecting the ecstasy to kick in just yet. <laughs> don't, don't, oh no, Bob. Oh, oh you're, no, you're your lying. lies are killing the truth fairies. Oh no. Oh, fairy down. <laughs> Quick, ready. Fairy down. Fairy down. I got We're her. losing this one. I We're got losing her. One. No, don't stop. Do the different one. <laughs> you're a fucking, you're alive! <laughs> that one there, do that one. Oh, bad lies! <laughs> help me with this and one. And look, she walks again. <laughs> Come on, let me help you with this one. You can... I think I've got this one. Oh my god. You killed her, Paul. <laughs> you killed her, fairy, you bastard. <laughs> with your lies! Humanity! <laughs> what the fuck are you people on? Still, ladies and gentlemen, what can we expect from a group of shallow men following a red-headed leader? Anyway, I'd like to just, uh, oh, fuck it, I'd like to do a song now. <laughs> 25 years ago, I did this song. We couldn't do it on television. We weren't allowed to perform it anywhere. We went to Queensland. Um, we had the police stop our show. Uh, I'd just like to invite some friends out to come and join me. Can you please welcome Stu Hunter, another Canberra boy who was associated with us at the time? Can you also welcome Mr. Tim Ferguson, who is there? I think we are on the eve of having gay marriage allowed in this country and I am all behind that because I think once you hear the words of the song, you know where we're going to go next. Sha la 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 Sha la 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 Sha la 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 Sha la 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 Sha la 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 Here boy, here boy, come here. I mean girls. Is worse than his bite. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. Sha la la la. Sha la la la. Furball solo. Yes, Bob. Is worse than his bite. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. I fucked up in the park after dark when the moon is up high in the sky and I.
soon find out if we can't handle the truth. Corinne will announce the winner of the great debate. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now up to all of you. Which team has your cheating heart? With all the noise you can muster, is it the affirmative? Yeah! because I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Can we handle the truth? Yeah! Come on. Yeah! All our truth handling skills not to be derided. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby award the 2012 Great Debate to the before we go, an old Slovenian proverb. Speak the truth, but leave immediately after. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.